What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial and today I'll show you how to automate the process for updating the file content in your S3 bucket. I found it very convenient when I have to update the contents for my website because I host it in the S3 bucket and all I have to do is make the changes and then push it to GitHub and then CodeBuild is going to build the project for me and then update the contents in the S3 bucket and of course you can use it for other use cases as well. So in this video I'm going to use an Angular app for the demo but along the way, I'll talk about the equivalent commands that you would use for a React.js app as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so step one is to create a repository to host our project on GitHub. So I'm going to click new and then give it a name. Get ignore. I'll just note, create a repo. All right, so it's done. And right now, let's create our Angular app on our machine. All right, All right so right now I have VS Code open with the empty folder. So what I would do is I'll click on Terminal, New Terminal. So in order to create an Angular app, you need to have Node, NPM, and the Angular CLI installed. So if you don't have it, you just go to the Node website and follow the instruction to download that install in your machine. So after you get Node and NPM installed, you need to do this command to install the Angular CLI. Um, and then for React.js, you need to do this to install the NPX. That's what you're going to use to create a React.js app. So right now, let me create a new project for the Angular app. So just to ng new, I'll just call it the same name as my GitHub name. Hit enter. Hit yes. I'll do SCSS. All right, it's done. So I'm going to see the into the project. And then what I can do is I just do ng serve to see if the project's working. All right, so it's listening on port 4200. So let's get there. All right, seems like it's working. So right now what I'm going to do is I will go to source the app in the app component I'm going to remove everything and then just add a tag to it that says github to s3 demo app and then we have a version number to be version 1.0 and then go back it should be updated with our new content and right now, let's go back to VS Code. And then we're going to add the buildspec.yaml file for the code builder to use for the, to build the project. So I'll go to the root directory, add a new file, and we have to call it buildspec.yaml. We need to specify the version. I believe this is the latest version. And then we have to identify the faces install runtime version we're going to use node version 12 and then the command we're going to use is we're first going to print out what it's doing now And then we're going to do npm install to install all the necessary modules or dependencies we have in the project. And then we're going to do npm install global angular CLI. And we're going to specify a version number for it. I'm going to use 10.0.8 because that's what I'm using in my machine. But you can specify newer versions if you want. And then the next phase is going to be built. And the, 
comment we're going to have is we're going to print out what it's doing. And then we're going to do ng build prod. For React.js apps, I believe the command is npm run build. And then the next phase is going to be post build, what we're going to do after we build the project. And we have the commands as, again, we're going to print out what we're doing here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to sync up the files we have in our project with the S3 bucket that we're going to use to host the content of the website. So we're going to do AWS S3 sync dist our project name. Everything. And then we specify the S3 bucket that we're going to create later on in the next step. I think we're just going to call it Ginmeister demo app 2021 and then delete. So this is the directory that Angular is going to create and put all your built files in there. I'm going to show you. So if I do ng build prod which is that. And this new directory is created with all these contents that we need to host the project. All right, so right now let's commit the changes that we have made and push it to GitHub. Now we need to go back to GitHub, copy this URL, and then do git remote add origin, and then paste the URL, and then do git push. And we got an error here. And the reason is that my branch name is, my branch name is master, and in our GitHub repo, we have the main here. So what I need to do is just copy this. Hit enter. And now in our GitHub, there should be a new branch call master. Refresh. There you go. And that has all the new code that we have. All right, so right now we are ready to create this S3 bucket to host our content. So let's go to the AWS console, type in S3, click on it, create bucket, type in the name that we have specified, uncheck this because we're gonna use that to host our website that's open to the public. Enable versioning, enable encryption, create. And right now let's configure that for website hosting. Click on property, scroll all the way down. Under the static website hosting, hit edit, enable. And then we're gonna put index HTML and do the same here. Save changes and then under permissions, scroll all the way down to the bucket policy, hit edit, and then we're going to add a bucket policy here. I'll include this in the link down below so you have it as well. But one thing you need to change here is you need to change this to match with what you have for your bucket.
One thing I want to mention here is you may be tempted to change the date here, but please don't because this is how AWS keeps track of the versions. So save changes. Unknown error. Oh, this is not right. Let's try again. All right, so now it's done. And now we're ready to create a code build to connect everything. So I'm just going to type in code build. Open that into a new tab. Create a new project. I'll just call it GitHub S3 Angular Demo. And then scroll down. Under source, we're going to select GitHub. And if this is the first time that you're doing it, you have to connect to GitHub. And then confirm. And if your AWS account has never connected to GitHub before, you may have to enter your passwords and stuff to authenticate. So follow those steps and connect to it. And then I'll select repo from my account and select the GitHub repo that we just created. I believe we call it GitHub, there you go, right here. And then source version, I just enter master because that's our branch. And then we can leave other configs as default. And next on the webhook, we're gonna check it here. And then event type, we're gonna choose push because we want it to build every time we push a change to it. And then operating system, we're gonna choose Ubuntu. Runtime, standard image. Um, I just choose standard 5.0. Image version, yeah, leave it as default and Linux. I'll just let it create a new service role for us. And I believe everything else can be left as default. And then lastly, the logs. I'll just enable CloudWatch and give it a group name as build, And then stream name is GitHub S3 Angular Demo. And then create a build project. And then one last thing we need to do is give CodeBuild the permission to access our S3 bucket so that you can delete and upload the new contents to it. And we're going to do that using an IAM role, which can be found under build details. Scroll down and service role. So right click on it, open that into a new tab. Under the base policy, we're going to add the policy. JSON. And we're going to add a new statement to it. I have it written down before, so I'm just going to copy and paste it here. But I'll include that in the link down below, so we can have that as well. I need to fix the quotes here. And then we have to change the bucket name here. So I'm just going to copy this. That is it. And then we hit save. Save changes. And right now let's go back to the S3 bucket. Now it's empty, but if I push the changes to GitHub, the new content is going to appear here. So if I go back to VS Code, let's change it to 1.1. Updated version, get push. And that's gonna trigger the code build. Let me go back to code build. And now it's in progress. We can click here, view the entire log. It will open the CloudWatch for all the logs and the progress. 
there's a delay. It may take a while. We can also look at the face details. And you can see it's doing the installing. All right, so everything's successful. In all the logs, you can look at progress as well. And right now, if I go back to the SD bucket, hit refresh. Hmm, nothing is here. Let's see what's wrong. Let's go back to VS Code. The build's back. Ah, I have a typo here. Commands. And that should do it. So if I push this. A new build is going to start. It's in progress. Look at the face details. All right, so everything's successful. Right now, let's go back to S3 and refresh. Hmm, still nothing. Let's see what's wrong. All right, so the indentation is wrong. It should match with here. Now it should work. Now let's go back. Go build. Go back here. Now there should be a third one. All right, so everything is successful and now it looks more reasonable because it actually took time to build and upload that to S3. So right now, if we go back to the S3 bucket, refresh, hey, there you go. We should see all the files in here. And if we go to properties, scroll all the way down, click on this URL, we should be able to see our website. And right now, if I change the version number, let's say to 2.0, it should be updated automatically. Now let's go back to code build. It's going. All right, so everything is successful. So right now, if I go back to the website and hit refresh, this is gonna change to 2.2, I mean 2.0. And there you go, it's updated. And that is it, everyone. I hope you have learned something. And if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.